When is the last time you looked in your medicine cabinet? I mean, really looked in it. Odds are it's been a while. In today's Into Your Wellbeing, what you should be keeping in your medicine cabinet for a healthy spring and summer. Our expert today is Dr. Ashley East, the clinical pharmacy coordinator at Cone Health Community Pharmacy at Med Center Greensboro. All right, I know a lot of people are thinking to themselves, hmm, the last time I looked in my medicine cabinet. So let's first talk about expiration dates. Should this be the guide to what you keep and what you don't keep? I think expiration dates are a great starting place to determine what to throw out. Um, it's certainly not the only factor that we think about, but I do think it's one of the most important. It is critical that people don't take expired medications. And that's for a couple reasons, really. Um, one of the reasons is because over time, medications can weaken. Um, and so while that may not seem like a big deal, um, if you're taking something that's just not gonna be as effective for you, then really you're just delaying treatment. This can actually worsen the problem. So then you have a bigger issue than you even started with. Um, but perhaps a bigger issue is that over time, not only are they weakening, but those ingredients can change and they can become more dangerous. So ultimately they can be harmful. So I think we kind of all think it's better to have something than to have nothing and we hold on to these medications, but that something in this case can actually be quite harmful. All right, and is that any different, the expiration date uh, thing when it comes to over-the-counter drugs versus prescription drugs? Yes and no. I mean, ultimately, prescription drugs can be more harmful. That's why they are classified as prescription, which is why you have to go to the doctor, you have to get an order, and they kind of supervise you while you take the medication. Uh, but at the end of the day, they both can be harmful. So I would say um, you ultimately want to look at expirations on both of them. All right, so let's talk about that. People are going to be going in their medicine cabinet after they watch that. They're going to be looking at all the bottles and things, and they're going to find a whole bunch of expired meds. So what do you do with the medicine that has expired or you just don't need that medicine anymore? Sure. So there's this really big misconception that you can just flush these or pour them down the drain. Um, but unfortunately, our filtration systems are not smart enough to filter these out of the compounds out of the water, and they end up just contaminating our water supply. Um, so ideally, you take these unused and unwanted medications to drug take back programs or even medication disposal units. Um, there are lots of these around our community. Lots of pharmacies carry them. Um, there are many cone locations who have these you know, disposal boxes and you put them right in there and they're disposed of properly. Um, we actually have a cone website that directs you if you aren't sure of where to find one of these disposal boxes. And that address is just conehealth.com slash drug disposal. Um, there are several police departments and health departments and again, your local pharmacy. So um, also feel free to reach out to your local pharmacist and ask them where can I dispose of these medications properly. All right, and are there any like rules or do's and don'ts when it comes to using those medication drop boxes? Absolutely, so we always recommend to remove your health information. Now, a lot of the boxes will say that you don't have to do that. And if the medication box says that you don't have to, then I would trust that you can leave your information on there. However, if you have the opportunity to go ahead and take off your name, the prescription number, your address, I would go ahead and remove that information just to be safe. Um, you also won't be able to return syringes in medication uh, return boxes. That, that is not allowed. You would have to contact Sharps to dispose of those properly. Okay, so we talked about how to get rid of some of the ones that we don't need anymore, but what are some items that we should all have in our medicine cabinet? Absolutely, so there's definitely some key things that you should have around just in case you need them. I always recommend to have something for fever or pain. That's your ibuprofen or your Tylenol or acetaminophen. You definitely wanna have those on hand. Also a working thermometer is really important to have in your medicine cabinet. Um, I tend to recommend something for a potential allergic reaction. So you wanna have something like Benadryl. Um, if you have a prescription for an EpiPen, you wanna make sure that you keep your EpiPen in date and have that available in your medicine cabinet. And then I also like to recommend anything for some stomach problems. Nobody wants to have an upset stomach, not be prepared and have to run out to the store. Uh, keep those in your medicine cabinet up to date. Okay, now what about families with children? Cause I'm sure they need probably a few different items than just the general. Sure, so you'd wanna have some of those very similar items, but also in your pediatric doses. So a lot of the liquid formulations, you'd wanna have your liquid Tylenol, your liquid ibuprofen. Um, you also wanna make sure that all of your medications have safety caps on them. That's important if you have children in the house. Make sure that your medicine cabinets are up high and not accessible to your children as well. You can put safety clasps on them or locks if you need to also to keep them um, safe from all your pediatric patients. Right. Um, but again, the medications are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. You want to have things for fever and pain. 
uh, stomach problems, and again, definitely allergic reactions. So I always tell people to have Benadryl, whether you're an adult or a child, have some Benadryl on hand. All right, so are there certain things that you should just not keep in the medicine cabinet? Absolutely. So um, in addition to getting rid of expired medications, there's medications that you would want to get rid of because you're no longer taking them. So if a doctor takes you off of a dosage and puts you on a different dose or a different medication, it's really important that you go ahead and get rid of the one that you're no longer taking. Again, we have this kind of tendency to hold on to things just in case, but all that's going to do is cause potential confusion in the future, um, and that risk is just not worth it. So always get rid of things that the doctor has taken you off of. And if the doctor has ever put you on something for as needed, for if you had a pain issue and then the issue goes away, make sure you throw those away. So. A good example of this is your opioid pain medications. These are medications that we do not want sitting in our medicine cabinet. I think the statistic on this is something over 70% of opioid dependence um, comes from leftover tablets in the medicine cabinet. So um, it's really, again, not worth the risk. Once you're done with these medications, make sure you dispose of them properly. All right, let's talk about the medicine cabinet itself, because that's something that I think that we all grew up with, the medicine cabinet in the bathroom, right? But is that really where we should be storing medications? It's really not, which is interesting because we know that they're marketed everywhere. You see them in all your you know, Home Depots and your Lowe's and whatnot. These medicine cabinets are marketed and, and put for bathroom use, but the humidity in the bathroom really is not a great place to store your medications. You wanna make sure it's a cool, dry environment. So if you have a very humid bathroom, if you don't have good ventilation, then that's really not a good spot to keep your medicine cabinet. So something to keep in mind, again, you want a very cool, dry place, preferably, again, up high so that it's not accessible to children. Mm -hmm. All right, and now that we've got kind of the medicine cabinet cleaned out, we've got it organized, we've got it stocked, how often should we be checking this cabinet or cleaning it out? I mean, ideally, I like to see them cleaned out about twice a year. I know that realistically, for most people, it's probably going to be at least annually. And I think that's a great, you know, at least. Uh, but I would love to see twice a year just to keep it clean, keep it organized. What you don't want is to have an emergency or have a situation come up and it's so cluttered and you have all these expired drugs and you can't find what you need. Mm -hmm. So maybe when we change the clocks back and forward, <laughs> we do that twice a year. You might as well just go ahead and do that now. Um, all right, so should you keep a written inventory of what's in there or maybe just a list of what you take on a regular basis, like especially if you've got to leave somewhere quick or that kind of thing? I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea to keep an inventory just so you know what you have, and that way when something does expire, you can replace it. Um, but even more important is to keep an, a running list of what you take, and that includes not only your everyday medications that your doctor may have prescribed, but that also includes your as-needed medications that you take only sometimes, as well as your over-the-counter vitamins and supplements. These are really important for your physician and your pharmacist to know about. Um, it gives us the very best picture of your entire um, care, and so we can take care of you properly. We really need all of that information. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you don't even keep a list there in the cabinet, you keep a list with you so that when you go to the doctor, you're able to kind of rattle it off because saying, I think I take this and I don't know how many milligrams it is, it can really kind of put you in a bind there. Exactly. Okay, so I have a question about so often people have a medication that the doctor gave them for muscle relaxing or pain or whatever else, they don't take all of it and someone says, oh, I've got a really bad headache, and they say, oh, let me give you one of these. Let's talk about the danger about that. Absolutely, so again, that kind of goes back to what is a prescription drug. A prescription drug requires a prescription from your doctor who knows your medical history, all of your medical conditions, and all of your other medications. So then when you introduce that particular prescription drug to someone else, we don't have that same picture. We don't have all of that information, and so we don't know that that prescription or that medication is safe for that patient. Um, so all we're doing is potentially harming them with something that we don't know that they are able to take. Yeah, it's not uh, a good thing to be giving somebody something, especially when it was not prescribed. We appreciate your time and your expertise and letting us know what we need to do. Hey, if you missed any of this, you can find the information. It's on our website. Look for WFNYNews2.com.